How you guys doing today? Yeah! Welcome to the Eventide booth. I'm here with Chuck Zwicky. Hello. D hello to everyone here at AES. To the millions watching at home, <laughs> we're about to show you guys how Chuck uses the H9000, uses VSIG, um, and I just want to give you a brief introduction because you are such a fascinating human being. Okay. <laughs> um, Chuck is, I, he's an audio scientist, basically. Like, the stuff you do and you come up with, you basically build studios, you build plugins, and you mix, and you you mix stuff with the stuff you built, which yep. is insane. That's fascinating. Usually people have a stock number of tools that they use, but you're like, no, I'm going to build it. And then it's totally unique to your workflow and to what you do. So like, kind of just tell us about that. Right. I mean, I, I started out as a musician, and uh, I started out wanting to build guitar pedals right. for my guitar. And then... Uh, that led to recording and devising ways to record. And then, uh, you know, it built up from there. And it's kind of like a, most of the gear in my studio stuff I've either designed or redesigned or modified or built. So what's interesting to me about the H9000, for example, is that this VSIG program allows me to go in and create things that don't exist. Like, right. that, you know, like an idea that I'll have. I'll wake up and go, oh, wait a minute. What if I could make something that did this and that? And uh, I don't have to dig through presets. I can, like, it's easier to just make it. Right. And just so people know, you have a background in electrical engineering, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, that's true. Science. Not that I've ever used it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have in one way or the other. Yeah. Um, before we get into the 9000, I have a really interesting question. So, just so you guys know, Chuck just got an iPhone. And I know that sound, doesn't sound like a big deal to us, but what were you using before the iPhone? Well, I had my landline, right? <laughs> and uh, if people wanted to reach me, if, if you know, I'm working, I'm not answering the phone. Um, but I had this little flip phone that would forward from my landline, and I never took it with me anywhere. And then uh, I just gave up. That's amazing. You finally gave, gave up. in and got an iPhone. <laughs> yes. But, you know, I got to say, the thing I love about it is this little switch on the side. You just turn it off, it's and an it's awesome. like it's not even there. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. I yeah. still look at it. It's still I, listening. If I feel a vibration, I'm like, oh, God. What is that now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool, man. Let's dive right into it. Sure. Um, oh, also, just so people know, Chuck has worked with Prince, Nine Inch Nails, Reggie Watts, mm -hmm. legends in yeah. the studio. Um, so I kind of just want to ask you, like, another question. Like, when it comes to mixing, do you have like a go-to, or do you basically build all your like algorithms? Um, what I mean to say is, do you have like a go-to outboard gear or software gear that you use all the time? Doesn't have to be even tied. Well, no, I have a. You know, my studio's full of outboard gear, and I've got, I have 57 channels of outboard compression right now, and I don't use a lot of plugins, so I use this stuff uh, all the time, and um, there's a couple things, like when I started mixing at home without a console, I missed the fact that with a console you had a limit. You could push the console, you start to hear it starting to sweat a little bit, and you get a certain vibe. So I built a line amp based on a Neve BA-283 module that will clip just like three-tenths of a dB before the converter clips. So I can push like the stereo bus right. up to the point where it's almost going to clip without it getting any digital clipping in That's there. Awesome. Yeah, and so yeah. It, but it, when I pop that stuff in when I'm mixing, it's like I just start laughing like, wow, this sounds, sounds like it's supposed to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So That's, that's awesome. Yeah. But I have to say, you know, as much as I don't like the way plugins sound, um, I started using the H9000 in my setup via light pipe in and out. And I'm thinking, well, it's the same algorithms that you have as your plugins, black hole that, but they do sound a lot better out of this box. Yeah, the converters are totally different. Yeah, I'm just going know. straight in through light pipe, though. I mean, it's no converters. Oh, it's just the algorithms themselves. The Sound reverbs bad. have more depth than they do in the plugins, and I, wow. I mean, there's got to be a lot of DSP overhead that you're not running into. Totally. Box, so yeah. Well, this, speaking of, let's dive into it. All right. Like, we're we're kind of all curious. You built an algorithm, a unique Chuck Zwicky signature <laughs> algorithm, and you're still working on it. So yeah, I mean, the first thing I came up with was I always like the sound of flanging, but not like a flanger that's a mechanical, you know, delay being modulated up and down and very predictable. Like when you make flanging with a tape machine. There's, there's things like the, the, the instant flanger has this thing called bounce. Yeah. But it's also, people didn't just let go of the reel and let it just bounce. They do other things as they slow the tape machines and speed them up. So I wanted to capture like the undulations and the fact that certain 
tape flanging can actually make it sound like it's inhaling and exhaling, wow. which I've never heard in a box. So I made so I wrote a plugin using a bunch of the uh, all passes and other modules in the 9000 and came up with, uh, let me just load it in. Send it over. So. And we're, just so you guys know, we're looking at Chuck's VSIC file over here. It's a deep flange. Just all that, all that kind of stuff. That's pretty awesome, man. And you, you did that by connecting all the modules together, I'll right? I'll show you, yeah. yeah I just let's see what that looks like. Here it is. So it's a bunch of delays here, a bunch of one-pole filters set up as all-pass filters. They're all being modulated uh, along with, and there's, you can hear it's not just a sweep up and a sweep down. It's actually got uh, variations because it's, they're, they're kind of non-repeating cycles, so, um, hang on, why did it stop? Oh, I turned it down. Yeah, just so we can hear a little bit of how it... So, from here now, it'll go... Bounces back. And then back down. It's not like a steady pattern. It is like pretty random, actually. It's, yeah, it's sort of. It, if you run an instrument through it, you can. It, it, it makes a nice chorus effect too. Right. But um, it does some sick out of tune flanging. Yeah. Um, but to show you the. So I just threw together those items in that way, and uh, gave it a bunch of knobs, which are here. Let's see here. Just uh, two delay lines, a gotcha. modulation and a rate, make it simple for yeah, people. Yeah, you were showing me something earlier where you cranked up, I think, the delay and oh, it became like... Oh, that was a different, like, different, was a different algorithm? algorithm? Yeah, yeah. That's the one I came up with this morning. So, uh, yeah, uh, but this one, for example, let me just show you what... Um, let's turn this down to here, turn the speed up. You can really hear kind of like the glitchiness that's happening in that sound. Well, I used these delay lines you have that are interpreted to uh, uh, one 256th of a sample, right. so they're interpolated. I mean, yeah. so they're um, they're pretty clean. But if we were to like, let's break up that volume. So if. Uh, even as a chorus, it's like... Right. Oh, like that, that totally changes the sound. Yeah. It sounds way thicker with it on. Sorry, that was me. Oh, I'm a pro. <laughs> so in, addition, in addition to flanging, you can also get some, you know, kind of multi-oscillator chorus. Yeah, type and of chaining that, like, I mean, it just makes it sound so thick mm -hmm. that, like, if you put, like, a reverb after that, you're going to instant Blade Runner sound. <laughs> totally. Score a film by 9,000. Yeah. Um, I could show you another. Please, Algo. yeah. Let me just go back to a sine wave. Okay, so VSIG, open. And you're opening up a different algorithm now, yeah, right? Yeah, this is a this is a one I came up with this morning at 7 a.m. And it's a bunch of uh, little, uh, this is uh, this is a bunch of delays with some kind of intense modulation going on. So we start with. I think it's your mic. 
there's the delay. Delay, delay. That is wide. That sounds yeah. very wide. Some two delays, but. So, if I. But if I turn up this modulation, uh, the glide rate, right. to slow. Oh, this is going to be cool. So. <laughs> It's very sound design -y. Random thing that I yeah, just but that I mean like that's kind of the beauty in it is because that's an algorithm you built and it mm. sounds awesome <laughs> and you built that at 7 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Make no mistake, it's not easy to do these things. You're just a genius. Oh uh, no, but but it's just something I I wanted. I woke up this morning, but you know I wanted to see if I could get something that would do the effect of like when you crank a delay knob and you've got something in the delay and the pitch shifts right. up and down and so that's all it's doing is just jumping to large delay and I can slow it down so it That sounds awesome, dude. Sawsome. You still get the warbliness of that, like, yeah. uh, once you algorithm. slow it, the change, uh, the, the rate of change down, uh, right. it's less, less glitchy like that. It almost sounds like a modular synth. Yeah. And that's how I think of, like, VSIG. To me, um, I work a lot with modular synthesizers, and I think that with VSIG, you have all this patching capability. You know, if, right. you, if you can think of something, you can find a module. You know, you don't have to... With a modular synth, you have to go out and buy a module. Right. And at VSIG, you've got all these modules in this list here, and uh, you can just think, well, what if I could take this one, connect it to this one, mm -hmm. make it do this? What would that sound like? Right. And uh, it's hours of fun, really. It's like patching in all your CVs yeah, on the modular exactly. synth. You've got CVs and gates and all the... Yeah, exactly the same as a modular synth. And I think that this is like to audio processing what a modular synth is to synthesis. Right. You know, it's kind of limited by your imagination, as they right. say. Yeah. I mean, I like to call this thing the inspiration machine. Because yeah. if you're stuck somewhere and you just pop one of these bad boys in, you're good. Like, yeah, and yeah. on top of that, you can go even deeper. So just to kind of clarify, you don't need to use VSIG with the 9000. There's like 2,000 different yes, algorithms 2000 algorithm. that are we built from the past, H3000 stuff, you know, all that kind of uh, really cool even tight algorithms. But the VSIG allows you to take all the modules that we use, our engineers, how they build algorithms is VSIG. And all those tools are available to you so you can create your own signature even tight algorithm, which is really something unique. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's a lot of fun, by the way. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, thank you so much for showing us all thank that you, stuff. Yeah. Again, any, this is uh, Chuck Zwicky. Uh, anybody, thank anybody you so much questions? for joining us. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, please let us know. We will definitely be happy to answer them for you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, man. That's fine.